This is the Tello drone, made by Rise. This small 80 gram drone features some of DJI's sensing technology and is actually sold by DJI on their store. If you're not familiar with DJI, they are the company behind some of the best and most popular drones on the market today. As you'll see later on though, the Tello is quite different from the drones made by DJI themselves. To begin with, this drone only costs $99, so don't expect performance like the Spark or the Mavic series of drones. This is a very good drone for the price, but keep the price in mind and temper your expectations accordingly. In the box, you'll get the Tello itself, spare propellers, propeller guards, the battery, and a propeller removal tool. You might notice there's no controller. That is because the drone is meant to be flown using their app on your smartphone or tablet. First, let's take a look at the app. Let me just say that one of the biggest concerns I had about this drone was the app. We all know the experience of using an app that crashes a lot and can imagine how bad that would be if you were operating a drone when that happened. Luckily, the app is very stable and user friendly. When you first launch the app, it helps you connect to the drone, which boils down to just connecting your phone or tablet to the Wi-Fi hotspot generated by the drone. Controlling the Tello is pretty straightforward. By default, your left thumb controls the altitude and rotation, while the right thumb flies the drone forward, back, left, and right. On the top, you have the button to take off, flight modes, settings, in the middle, you have the status section with the battery level, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signal, horizontal speed, and your height. Then on the right, you have your photo and video library, photo and video selector, and your shutter button. So here's the drone itself. As you can see, it's tiny. It is dwarfed by the Mavic Pro, which is a fairly small drone already. The camera is fixed on the front. There are two sensors on the bottom, and the battery is inserted into the back of the drone. Unlike some other cheaper drones or quadcopters I've used before, there's no plug that you have to plug into this. It just kind of snaps in, which is really, really nice. Those plugs that go on the, the cheaper drones sometimes can be really hard to get out. Being able to charge this via USB is really handy. You can plug this into a power adapter in the wall, obviously, or you can plug it into your car or a computer or one of these power banks. And this can charge the battery in that several times over. The battery is supposed to last about 13 minutes on a charge, and that's pretty much what I've experienced. This also charges very quickly, so between flights, you can just plug it into a power bank or your car drive to your next destination, and it should be pretty well charged. Let's fly this thing then. As the website warns, this is really meant for indoor flying. Its wireless range is listed as 100 meters, but in my experience, it's usually been less than half of that, even when I'm out in a field which shouldn't really have much interference. So when you're indoors, this really isn't a problem. The other advantage to being indoors is a lack of wind. Wind really affects this drone. The propeller guards help indoors so you can bump into walls and stuff at low speeds without much drama. Indoors, the controls are rock solid. As you can see, it is able to maintain its location pretty steadily. This drone features a vision positioning system, which does a great job most of the time, but wasn't always able to save me from myself. While flying indoors is very easy to do, as you can see, outdoors is a whole different beast. When there's no wind, it's great but even slight wind will begin to affect it, and if you get a gust of wind, it'll send your Tello flying off. As mentioned before though, the range on this isn't very good. So even on a calm day, you're not going to get very far from yourself, and it's not able to fly very high, so you won't be able to get those big dramatic drone shots. If you're just flying around your yard though, this thing is pretty good. And just being able to fly around and use the tricks in flight mode really make this good fun for $99. Speaking of flight mode, let's go through some of the options. When you tap on the flight mode button, you'll see the following options. Up and away, 
8D flips, 360, circle, throw and go, and bounce mode. Up and Away is meant to give you the cinematic feel that's supposed to look like a crane shot, but due to the lack of height this drone can get, about 25 feet in my experience, the effect isn't what I describe as epic. My Mavic Pro has a similar feature which goes much higher, so maybe I was spoiled by that. This could really be a fun shot to get of your family at a cookout or at the beach. Next are the 8D flips. What that is referring to is it can flip in eight different directions. You have forward, back, left, and right, along with four diagonal directions. This is really fun, and it works really well. One thing to note, though, is that when you do this while recording, the forces of the flip seem to lock up the camera for a second each time. It's still really cool, though. The 360 just makes the drone spin around in place, and the circles makes it fly around a circle while being focused on the center point. Throw and go is awesome. Once activated, the rotors begin to spin, and when you toss the drone, it begins flying. This not only looks and feels cool, but it also serves a function. A drone this small really can't take off in long grass or deep snow that easily, so being able to toss it in the air helps a lot. You can actually land it in your hand as well. Let's talk about the camera. This has a camera capable of 5 megapixel pictures and 720p video, which does work pretty well, but as you can see, it's not pulling off any miracles. When you're outdoors in the wind, you can often see rolling shutter and even pixelation in videos. The rolling shutter isn't very bad, but the pixelation happens pretty often when you're moving around a lot. This drone doesn't have onboard storage and relies completely on your phone to record video as it's being transmitted. This causes the pixelation. One positive aspect of the phone acting as the drone storage is that you don't really need to transfer the videos and images when you're done flying. They're already on there. All you need to do is save the ones you want to keep to your camera roll. So it might seem like I've been pretty harsh on this drone, but in reality, as long as you're just buying this drone to have some fun with, you won't be disappointed. One of the beauties of having a $99 drone is that you can take some risks with it that I wouldn't want to take with my $999 Mavic Pro. Another plus is portability. I've been leaving this in the center console plugged into my car to charge and it's been pretty much ready to fly whenever I want it. They say the best camera is the one you have with you. Well that's true for this drone as well in my opinion. You can throw it in your backpack plugged into a power bank and take it on a hike to snap pictures or you can be lazy like me and just leave it in your car so you can fly it around at your lunch break. This lets everyone you work with know, don't invite this guy to things, he'll probably talk about his nerdy hobby. Well, that's all for today. Please like and subscribe for future videos.